Apex users can streamline their workflows by building powerful custom tools. One of the challenges in building these custom tools is that you debug them in ways that are different from what you would do with a standalone Python application. In this video, I'll show a few techniques for debugging Apex custom tools. First, let me point to a couple of examples of what custom tools are. In Apex, tools are on the right-hand side of the window. The tools in the top and bottom group are implemented natively in Apex. The tools in this middle group are custom tools, so they're written and implemented in Python, and any user can open up that Python code and inspect it. These tools offer a lot of capabilities to Apex, such as creating fasteners or doing geometry and meshing operations. I created these tools so that students can use Apex as a digital lab to learn solid mechanics. For example, it's easy for them to model a column in buckling, stress and strain on a block, or model a beam, like a simply supported beam or a cantilever beam. I'll just click this green apply check mark, and Apex generates a simple cantilever beam. In a couple of examples later in this video, we will work on the code that generates the supports for the beam. If you're interested in getting into custom tools, looking at what's already out there gives you a sense as to what's possible. Still, making custom tools requires you to be very knowledgeable about Apex and have some familiarity with Python. If you're trying to get started with doing any Python scripting in Apex, I would say the easiest thing to do is play with this record macro button, and that will generate Python code as you do different things in Apex. With all that said, the rest of this video is really intended for people who are starting to develop custom tools and want to learn some techniques for debugging them. An Apex custom tool runs on two different Python processes. I like to call them the front end and the back end. The documentation calls them the SDK and the API. Either way, the front end generates the GUI that you see in Apex, and the back end runs a script kind of like what you would get from Macro Record. The front end depends on a module called Apex underscore SDK, and the back end depends on a module that's just called Apex. The front end and back end code are implemented differently. They have different sets of documentation, and you need different debugging tools to be able to make sure that they're working right. I'm going to give you a tip on debugging the front end code now, and then I'll show you all about how to do debugging for the back end, which is where most of the work is. To debug front end Apex code, it helps to enable Dash Console in the program that runs Apex, called runmscapex.bat. I'll show you how to do this. To enable the console for Apex, we first need to open up a text editor in administrator mode. So I click down here to search and type notepad and right click on notepad and click run as administrator. I click file, open, and I'll change from text documents to all files. And I'll go to C drive, program files, MSC software. I'm gonna do MSC Apex student edition, select the version that I want to use and double click on run MSC Apex .bat. I look for the line that starts with start, and at the end of that line, simply type dash console. And I can click save. File, save. Now I will run Apex and we can see the console. So now Apex is open. I can access the console by clicking on this icon here. Now I'm ready to use this for some real work. I'm going to show an example of how the console can be used in debugging a GUI for Apex. I've taken one of my custom tools and inserted a bug in it on purpose so that I can show you how to debug it. So I'm going to click on Education, open up the Beam tool, and look at the labels here for the supports. These labels look reasonable, fixed, pin, roller, free, but for the right-hand support, they're a little broken, fixed, free, roller, and then this one is blank. What's going on there? Let's pull up the relevant code in VS Code, which is my preferred tool for writing code. I'll tell you more about VS Code soon. So here's the part of the code that makes the radio buttons to set the right-hand side supports. Let's see what happens if I simply add a print statement to show what this RHS support looks like. That's the array of right-hand side support option radio buttons. I close the custom tool, and now when I reopen it, I should see something over in the console. So here we have a list of these different radio button objects. I can print out the labels for each of the radio buttons using a list comprehension. s.content for s in RHS support. And I'll close and reopen the custom tool. And here I see the labels. 
So those aren't what I want, but those do agree with what I see over here. I'm going to add this print statement after each of those labels is created, and we'll see when things break. And let's try again. I'll close and reopen the custom tool. And here I see that these labels are set pretty well. So fixed, then fixed, then pin, then we add roller onto the list. And the last time we're supposed to add the word free onto the end of the list, but instead it gets added here. What's going on? So here we see that this label is set at position one, as opposed to minus one, minus one being the end of the list, which is the way that it's done in these other cases. Let's check and see if that's fixed the bug. Okay, great. This is looking perfect here and really logical over here. That was a simple example of using the console for debugging a GUI in Apex. And most of us don't make very complex GUIs in Apex, and so debugging them is not the biggest issue, but a tool like this is very helpful. I recommend using VS Code to develop Apex custom tools. It's a free integrated development environment, and it is the most popular IDE today. Um, when you install VS Code and start programming in Python with it, VS Code will encourage you to install most of these extensions, and they're definitely worth it, and they're all free. I also recommend one called the Black Formatter, which can automatically format source code, and that's very useful with output from Macro Record. You've already seen me do some things with VS Code, and I'm going to show you some more features from it, being able to open up a terminal and run the VS Code debugger. Remoting lets you see how Apex is thinking about your finite element model by letting you create a Python session that can actually communicate with Apex. When you do remoting, you'll typically create a Python shell, have that shell launch Apex, and then you can, again, talk back and forth with Apex using Python. To set up remoting in Apex, I first click Terminal, New Terminal. I enter the path for the Python installation for Apex, and that path is where Apex is installed, followed by Python 3, Python.exe. And if you were to do just that, that would be fine, but I like doing dash m ipython, which gives me a really nice text-based user interface for dealing with Python. Now I enter the three commands that I showed earlier. You may get alerts from Windows Defender Firewall. Just hit Allow Access. The remoting module is bundled with Apex. Remoting gives you an option to launch application, so this is going to run a new copy of Apex for me. Once that's actually launched, I can then do Import Apex, and this allows me to interact with Apex as if I were running a macro, but instead I can just type live here and immediately see the response. Now I'm back in the terminal in VS Code, and I'm in a Python session that is really running as a process within Apex. Let's say that I want to get material properties, a list of all the material properties in the model. From the documentation, I know that apex.catalog is a module that has this kind of information. Let's take a look. I can type apex.cat and press tab, and that auto-completes. Now I can type dot and tab, and that shows me all of the things that are within that module. Well, that's a lot, and not all of that is immediately relevant. If I'm trying to just get information, I can type get, get. And we still see that we have access to a real wealth of property information, material properties, shells, springs, bushings, um, that kind of thing. And what we'll focus on are materials. One way to go is to use the get material function on each material that we have. And so that has let me access a material object. The problem is that I would need to know the exact name of every material that I'm dealing with. Alternatively, I can use get materials. You see that S there? That will give me a list of all of the material objects. I can make a list that is equal to that return value there. I could pick out one material as the first value in that list. I could look at its name. I could also try and get its properties. So I've typed mat.get and I hit tab. And I see that there's different functions here. Get material type, get material models. Let's do get material, let's do get material models. And we see that that's another list. It's a list with just one item. So I'll make a new variable that is just get material models and I pick the zeroth element in the list. Now let's inspect that model. And in this case, we see that get properties and get property are what we're looking for. We even have a preview here that tells us the types of these functions. So get properties doesn't take any arguments. Get property takes the name of the property that we're interested in. Let's get all the properties. 
Well, that was just the function. Let's run the function. Okay, and let's get the name and properties of all of these materials. We can do that with a list comprehension. And here we have a list of all of the materials and their corresponding properties that I've already loaded into this model. I'm going to show you how to use the VS Code debugger with Apex. Now the VS Code debugger is very well documented and you can rely on that documentation for general use. I'm going to show you specifically how you can connect the VS Code debugger to Apex and what a workflow with VS Code and Apex together looks like. Now I will show you how to configure the VS Code debugger to connect to Apex. I click on debugger. Now to customize, I need to create a launch.json file. For this to work right, you need to already have created a VS Code workspace, and I'll leave it to you to figure out how to do that. The VS Code documentation is really good, and I'm selecting the workspace folder that I'm going to use. Apex Utilities Test is what I'll do. If you have just an empty launch.json, you haven't entered a configuration yet, it should look blank like this. There's a button, Add Configuration, and I will pick Python Debugger, I want to be able to attach using a process ID. So this will be on my local machine, but we're not gonna start up a new Python session. We want to connect to the one that is already in Apex. There we go, I am set now. Let me show you an example of using this. Here's the source code for one of the education custom tools. I put a bug in it on purpose to be able to demonstrate how to debug things using the VS Code debugger. Here is the source code for one of the education custom tools, but with a bug inserted into it so that we can have an example of how to debug. Now that I've configured things in the launch.json, I can start debugging. I need to select a process to attach to. I'm going to type msc for msc apex, and here I just have one instance of apex running. If I had multiple sessions of apex running at the same time, I would need to pick between them based on the process ID. And I see that I have a status bar going here. I am connecting. I can look in the debug console and it's telling me that it's trying to attach to that process ID. It normally takes a few seconds for this to happen. It looks like we have successfully connected. I see the debug controls in the top center and the call stack in the bottom left. We don't have a lot of interesting things to inspect over here because we're not currently running any code. For that, let's do an example. To demonstrate using VS Code to debug an Apex custom tool, I put another bug in the Beam custom tool in the backend code. I'm going to Education, Beam, and I'll click the green Apply check mark. Oh no, the Python script didn't execute all the way. What's the problem? I'll view the log file. Fixed is not a kind of support that is listed. This error is due to a bug in the tool. Email the creator. Well, that's me. Gosh, I've got to figure this out. It says the problem is in the beam file around line 92 or 147, maybe in the set support function. Let's check that out. I'll go to VS Code. I'm in VS Code. I know that the problem, again, is in this beam.py file. Maybe it's around line 92, but that's just calling this set support function. I bet the problem is within that function. I will set a breakpoint right at the start of the function, one inside and one right after we retrieve the constraint. Okay, let's give this a try. So I'm going to go back to Apex, and I'm going to run the script again. Apex has, it seems like, stalled out. Really, VS Code is waiting for me. Apex stopped execution right at this breakpoint. It's actually seeing things immediately outside of the scope of that function. I'm going to press continue to go into the function. Within the function, right now I have variables kind and side, which were inputs to the function, and then I can also access global variables. Let's continue. So I can step down to this next line here. To actually execute this constraint line, I'm going to use the step over option. Now I see that the constraint is set as a local variable, and I can inspect it and see that, for example, all of the x, y, z rotation and translation degrees of freedom are enabled. So this constraint controls all degrees of freedom. Now let's trace through. I'm going to press this button and we'll see this pointer and the highlighted line move down. Because the kind of constraint is fixed, we would expect it to stop at this first option here. Oh, it skipped it. Now it's at the else if clause for pin, for roller, for free. It's not matching any of those. And now we get that error that we saw. Hmm, what could be going on? Well, we can type Python expressions here. For example, I could type constraint.getName, and that tells me that this constraint is named LHS for left-hand side. I can also break down this expression here. I've got kind, and it's fixed. And is this expression true? I thought it would have been true. 
Oh, it's false. Oh, it's because kind is fixed and I was checking if it was equal to fix. Let's try changing this. And I'm going to hit continue here. Now that didn't fix things yet, I'm going to have to run the code again. So I'll run one more time and I'm going back to VS Code. And this time I'll do continue, step, step. And I would expect it to go in here and then jump down to the end of the function now that I think I've fixed the problem. It looks like the update method is taking its inputs. And now the update method has executed. And it looks like we have stepped through this function successfully. I'm going to step again, and I'm going to just keep stepping through. And I'll hit continue. Let's go back to Apex. The status bar at the bottom of the screen shows that my script ran successfully. Great, so I've fixed the bug. Finally, I'm going to encourage you to use apex.disableshowoutput in your production code once things have gotten working great. Otherwise, Apex will always show a text file to your users whenever a script runs. It's challenging to build Apex custom tools, but it's worth the effort because it can really increase your productivity. I hope that having shown you the debugging tools that I've mentioned here can really help that process go smoothly for you. If you're interested in trying out Apex or other Hexagon simulation software, check the links in the description. I've also linked to relevant documentation. If you have questions, leave them in the comments or send me a message on LinkedIn. I'd really like to hear from you. Have a great day. Bye.